Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So with module 25, we'll be getting a new trial. Xemnids Reliquary, um, however you want to pronounce that. And like most trials in the past, excluding recently the rework to Tiamat, we have been able to get new weapon sets from here. And so this trial, being new and all, will be the same. It'll have a new weapon set that we can chase for. So in this video, we're going to discuss how viable is it going to be? Is it going to compete with what we currently use as five times stronghold buff. That would be from a weapon set like this, the Feywood ones, or you have the Mastered ones, or you have the old stronghold ones. Basically, you and your allies are granted the following benefits of 2% damage, 2% healing, and 2% less damage received. And that stacks up to five times. So when you're in your full party with everybody using these, then you have 10% extra damage. 10% extra healing and 10% less damage taken, which can be pretty uh, a significant buff within a trial like this, where surviving is not exactly the easiest thing. You end up with having damage soak checks, which you might not be able to survive without that extra 10%. Especially when you're new here and you might take more damage than you should because of mistakes. Having to survive these damage checks can, uh, yeah, this 10% can be a lifesaver. And so these new weapons you'll be able to obtain by completing the trial. Most likely you'll have one dropping at the end and everybody can roll on it. So you'll get one between 10 people. And then you'll also get a currency, which will be Xemnid's eye. And you can save up 30 of those eyes, as you can see here, and buy one of your weapons. So after two weeks, because of the weekly cap of 30, of farming this trial, that being if you can complete it, you could get the full set without them having dropped within the trial. Most people will just wait, have them drop in the trial, and then save the currency for the vanity item or the fashion item, which they don't seem to have added this time around, at least not yet. Usually they'd have like a cloak or vanity pad or something you could spend this currency on just for bragging rights. So we're going to showcase each of these weapons. But first, let's go over the bonus that they provide us as that's a bit of a wall of text. So you can see right here the set bonus if you have both of them. You would gain the ability to deal or heal an additional 5% damage based on the difference of the hit points percentage between the player and your target. So this would be on average maybe 2.5% for damage dealers. And then you'd also gain a bonus much like the stronghold set where you would gain a bonus depending on your role though. So 1% outgoing damage, 1% damage reduction, and 1% healing. And this effect can stack five times if everybody's using these weapons in your party. So that would be a 5% damage increase. And then you also have whenever you're in Underdark, your damage increased by 5%. So for this new trial, will these weapons be best in slot? Will they be best in slot for like Temple of the Spider? We've got to cover that. And we've got to compare that to, again, just using a full group of the Stronghold bonus weapons, since they would give a reliable 10%. But you can see and you can compare them against like the Stormforged weapons, and the bonus is already a good bit more reliable than that. That's a good thing at least. And you may also note that you will have plus 250 base damage, whereas the Stormforged only had plus 200. So they've upped that again as well. So I've gone and done a bit of math here and you can see comparing versus a group with five times masterwork versus a group with the module 25 weapons and two masterworks because the supports will most likely still be going with masterwork as that will provide the biggest bonus. You can see through here, like a tank and a healer would only provide an extra 1% to the group each. So if they were to run the stronghold bonus right here, they could still provide that 2% to the DPS each. So that'd be a 4% instead of a 2%. That's why you would have this right here. Now you can see you basically obtain a ton of item level due to the difference is over a thousand now between these like Feywood ones plus one variants of 1,500 to these mythic ones at 2,050. Yeah, 
ton of item level. And then, of course, having that extra 250 base damage, which we're just going to increase this by 2083 to equate for that 250 damage, which is basically like increasing your item level. And just again, that's for DPS. You'd basically gain even more benefit as a healer. Just a little bit, though. So that would be like the item level difference if you were just gaining raw item level. And then the accuracy difference is right here, mainly because of the 2.5% because of the stronghold weapons giving the ability to have modifications, whereas the new weapons will not. And the modifications allow you to gain a maximum of 2,500 extra stats there. And on a min-max build, you're going to end up putting that in just an accuracy increase. And then you're going to have the rest of your stats capped here. And the only difference will be the damage buffs and the damage buffs are actually pretty close because again your stronghold weapon set or your masterwork weapon set is going to give a 10 percent boost so we're, we're starting at like 50 percent damage buffs because we're going to have other buffs that are going to contribute to our damage for example things like like this right here you're going to have companions which give you damage you're going to have overloads and so on and ultimately start at 50 percent add 10% and then we can add like 2%. The reason we add 2% is because again, the modification on the main hand is going to give you 10% extra damage to like your at will. Again, if you're DPS, you're gonna have a damaging at will there. And then we compare that versus the new weapon set, which is gonna have an overall of like a 14.5% average increase to your damage. That is because of 2.5%, the average first bonus there, 5% maximum, but since your target is generally going to only be at 50% health, like half the time, then we will consider that. And then we get the 3%, which is again, going to be from a three DPS party having uh, these weapons. So that would be 3% from there, plus the 4% again from the two masterwork buff from a healer in your tank, plus the 5% for being in Underdark. So that would be right there. And all the end game content right now is going to be within Underdark. We'll have to see what happens with module 26. We could well be moving out of Underdark. And if that's the case, well, I think these weapons will still remain viable as if we just do like a quick 59.5% there, they're still 1% better than having a 5 uh, masterwork group. Now, the problem here is that you lose the 10% damage resistance. So for people who are still new to the game and still going to be learning this new trial, I highly recommend they still run with a full party of times five masterwork buff. As you can see, we run here. That is again for learning the content, having that extra layer of protection. But for us min maxers who want to make as much damage as possible, get through the content as quick as possible, these new weapons are going to be best in slot for damage dealers. Supports, unfortunately, yeah, you're still going to be stuck or at least recommended to use the like Feywood weapons or a stronghold weapon set as they generally don't need to push for min max with regards to survivability and healing. So that's my conclusion. Again, it's like over 4% damage difference. That's overall. And so yes, these new mythic weapons will be best in slot. Not many people, I'll admit, will be able to get them at le least not for quite some time. But at least those of us who can, can be confident that they are going to be at least worth the grind just because they are going to be best in slot. I just hope there'll be other things that will motivate people to go for that trial because if the only thing there is these new weapons, well, once you get them, you're kind of like, nah, I'm done. I'm out. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to waste scrolls and stones and consumables just to complete content that I'm not gaining anything from. I'm just losing value through spending those consumables. So let's showcase now what those weapons are going to look like as they are pretty unique and pretty cool, in my opinion, especially for some classes. For the Paladin, they look like this. You can see the mace right there. We can go into like the combat animation and you can see it just there. Now, it's got the visual effect on it right there. We may as well go and remove that because we have the uh, Plague Illusion on it. But the weapon set will look like this. I think it looks pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I'm up for going for it. I like the visuals on it. It's unique. I haven't seen that in the game before. 
for a paladin it's great for a barbarian it looks like this it's a pretty sick looking scythe it's got the same headpiece there similar to i guess what the paladin has with the mace with the combat animation you're going to be using it like so and i think it's it's pretty unique pretty sick definitely done a good job there for the bard they look like this you have the rapier on the side just there with then the loot or a lyre on your back like so again it's all kind of spider themed we can see the combat animations there as well that's you holding your loot and i guess the, the spray pierce just on the side there pretty neat now the scepter for the cleric looks like this i is still a bit confused why they put them kind of upside down like by my opinion it should be the other way but uh it is what it is i guess it's all right but i think there's a lot more exciting options you could use more fancy options on a cleric anyway for a fighter you'll be ending up with kind of like a glaive along with then a smallish shield there i personally like fighter with glaives and spears so why not shield some people probably think it's a bit small but I think it's pretty neat might look a bit odd on a, a larger character though then i've shown you the one for the paladin we then have the ranger who will have like those knives on the side just there along with then the bow on your back i think it's decent the bow is a little odd there having like three things coming off the bottom with two on the top but it is a bit more i guess simpler than some of those other really weird bows and i'm personally more a fan of uh, simple bows rather than uh, those odd looking gigantic ones for a rogue we get some neat little daggers i guess not oversized or anything uh yeah a pretty modest pretty stylish depends what you're up for and then warlock gets their packed blade as you see there it's just kind of a dagger again with that same stylish look that you would have that's theming across these weapons and finally we have the orb for the wizard so it's gonna look like this right there i don't think it's uh all too extravagant we can again get rid of the illusion and it's yeah it's just a fairly simple orb the combat animation again will be just like this it's kind of a spider with a ruby not too impressed to be honest with the wizards i'll personally stick with my book like so i guess it, it's all a matter of theming with your character so yes these weapons will be best in slot that's at least good to hear with regards to the trial being as challenging as it's going to be. At least you'll get something that might be considered worth your while, especially for some of those visuals. I like it. Massive thank you again to all of these channel members for their continued support. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.